In software engineering, we are taking chapter number 34, Project Scheduling. In Project Scheduling, there are different tasks. You might recall that we first make the scope, then we ooze out or take out the functions, and then we decide the task that will be accomplished to fulfill the function. So interdependencies, there will be tasks which will be interdependent. So these are defined using a task network. So how to make this task first of all? We need to do the WBS, Work Breakdown Structure. And what is this WS? This WBS uh, is defined for the product as a whole, for the complete product or for the important, you can say, individual functions. So for an individual function or a whole product, we divide it like one, two, three tasks so that they can be dealt easily. Both PERT and CPM, they provide the quantitative tools. PERT is the project evaluation and review technique. CPM is the critical path method. Now, in the, they, these two are the project management methods, scheduling methods basically. So, how do we do this? We determine the critical path and critical path is what? This is the longest path with critical activities. That is the longest, longest path possible from the start to finish is the critical path. This is the chain of task that will determine the whole duration of the complete project. So the longest path is critical path deciding the actual duration of the project. So both PERT and CPM tries to do that and they try to determine critical path especially the CPM does that. And then we use the statistical model. For example, I'll just give an example. We have already seen that. We try to find out the optimistic value, then the pessimistic value, and then the most likely value. And we use this statistical model. That is, for example, somebody says four days it will complete, pessimistic says seven days, and most likely is six days. So we just add them with giving a weight of four to the middle one, and then we add and divide it by six. So we are basically establishing the most likely time estimate for the individual task using a kind of statistical models. Basically, duration is the key. And then we try to calculate the boundary times. That will define a time window for a particular task. Time window, boundary, it just means when it is going to start in your project and when it is going to end. What is a Gantt chart? So, Admiki, he was the first, he was a Russian. He proposed this chart. But he wrote it in uh, Russian, so it could not, you know, propagate that much. Then Henry Gant, he was the key to propose it, to, to actually publish it and to represent it. So Gantt chart, if you see now, is just like any kind of any table. Okay, this is just like a table. And if you want to get into more detail, then this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Now the x-axis, y-axis. y-axis, we have all the tasks which we have decided. And these tasks are to be done. And when to be done is on the x-axis. On x-axis, we have the time. We have the dates. For example, planning. Planning will start from here. This is the starting date. This is the whole duration in this color. And finally, the end is the end duration. So this is the duration of planning. So from here you can see the schedule. You can find out when it is going to complete and we can track and control also. There are certain tasks which are going to go in concurrent. There are certain tasks which are going to go in uh, sequence wise. And then we have different uh, representation like the diamonds etc. to represent the milestone. So this is basically the representation of task on a time scale. Okay, it will give you an idea as a project manager how the things are going. So a Gantt chart is a project management tool. 
software or any kind of project. This grand chart is a project management tool which enables you to schedule your work over a period of time. That is when it will start, what is the duration? That means when it will end. And this can be very useful if you have a big task, big, big function say, you can divide it. For example, a design activity is a big activity. So if we have to define and derive the task from it. So it can be useful for breaking down the big piece of work into a series of tasks. And then we can do the planning, when to complete which task, how to sequence it, which one will come after which one. So again, chart shows the activities or the task or the work, whichever you say, of a project mapped against a time scale. Y-axis, task or activity or work. X-axis, it's time. So it's a time scale. You know what is going to happen when. And this is used to plan a project as a project manager and sequencing the activities. As I said, they can be sequenced, they can be concurrent, they can be overlapping and setting them out in the order in which they are supposed to be completed. So let us take an example. This is a very simple uh, project management example of Gantt chart. Now on this, the second column you see is basically the task. So the first one is the task name. So uh, the second column, here you see a box I have made. This is the first one is task name. The second block is saying this, the main task, it is called as a summary task and those tasks below it are called the subtask of this summary task. So you can call it as a main task also having this subtask as book tickets and page. The third one is the start date of that task when it is going to start. The start date determines the start position of the task bar which we are going to make. The finish, the fourth one, the finish is the date which is determining the end position of the task bar. Then we have the duration. Duration is the start and finish. The, the duration is the time between start and finish. So the difference between end and start is the duration. For D we have written D stands for days. You can write 4H for hours. You can write 4W for weeks. 4 weeks. Okay, so this, this task whose duration will be zero is called a milestone. You see, this is also a task, but it is a diamond. Here, the duration is zero and this is a milestone. That is a substantial significant work product will be produced after previous task. The sixth one is the percentage completion and this is indicating the progress of a particular task. Then you see here that this is 25%. 25% is complete. So you see that whole, whole task bar is divided into two colors. The first color is 25% of the whole bar. 25% so is a different color. The whole bar is of a blue color. For example, one day 100% that is the whole of the bar will be in the completed color which has been chosen. Okay. So now the next one is the, the lines which you see. The lines are nothing but the connector lines. The connector lines between the task. And this shows the sequence also. And finally, you see, this is the actual thing which we want to represent. And this is a task bar. This is a task bar. Okay. So now these tasks, if you see here, they are in a parallel, they can be in sequence, they can be concurrent, there will be some work product and they are all on the time line scale. So timeline charts or Gantt chart. When we are creating a software project schedule or any project schedule, we always start with a WBS, work breakdown structure. We start with actually getting a task. For example, a school event, there will be some, some, some inauguration, some invitation, then who is going to dance, some cultural activity, and finally the, you know, who the teacher or a principal will give 
will address you and there will be a refreshment there will be some you know some gifts etc some prizes so this this is a whole whole function or a work we we just want to divide it into task like food is a task so if automated tools are used this wbs work breakdowns is the input as a task network or task outline so this work wbs is the input for this for uh, the making of task network and the task outline so first you have to make the task that can only be done using the wbs and the for each task the start date the duration and also the effort needed will be there effort needed means the person person to be employed so a task for example the effort you have devised the duration and the start date when you know the start date and duration you know the end date and this task may be as or maybe or it will be assigned to certain individuals so if you see here there are certain timeline these are the on the first column of both the pictures you see these are the task name these are the work task so this work task on a time scale is the gantt chart or a timeline chart so a timeline chart or a gantt chart can be developed for the entire project you can make it for the whole project or you can also do it if the function is big and uh, having a significant impact you can also make it for that so let us see this is an example of a software project schedule for a concept scoping task of a say word processing okay now here are the task all project task are uh, listed here on the left hand column on the left hand column these are all the tasks you need to complete when to complete this is on the horizontal bars these horizontal bars are indicating the duration of each task the first picture is showing the weeks and days the second one on the right hand side is showing it in in terms of the uh, progress bar type progress bar this is the progress bar okay so this is the horizontal bar i am talking about and this is duration of each task multiple bars if you see at the same time on the calendar what it is implying it is implying the task concurrency they are taking place at the same time and the diamonds diamonds zero duration time it indicates milestones certain what product is going to come here then the project tables can be produced a tabular listing of all the project tasks their planned and their actual start and end dates and this is all this is a table simply and that is called as a timeline chart developed by abelichi and the and then forwarded by mr henry gant so this is a gant chart to schedule and to track and control now tracking and controlling the schedule project schedule is now a road map now when it is in front of us we can track and also we can control task and milestone if you are here you know what all are completed what all is going on right now and what all have not yet been started so from here you can easily track and then you can control so first of all how do you how do you actually track because you need to uh, be very sure about your milestones so the ways of tracking is these are very simple ways everyone knows that these are common sense that you need to meet people ask them the progress report uh, tell tell them that give us the raw, uh, reports and ask for the problems you can evaluate all the results you have got from the reviews and this has to be done for the whole software engineering process basically you are reviewing with meeting you have a chart in your hand you are just asking and then you need to see whether the Di the diamonds, which are the actually milestones, significant work product, these are accomplished by the scheduled date or not, and then you have to compare this actual start date to the planned start date for each project task in this resource table or the the Gantt chart. You can say this is not a Gantt chart actually. This is a resource table. And, uh, the Gantt chart is on the right side. The left hand side is the resource table. Now you can easily find out. okay this work is not yet been completed oh this work is completed so you can also go to the practitioners which are the actual programmers 
and you can also obtain from them what is the progress uh, status and what are the problems you are facing and then you have to mitigate. Then you will use the actually mathematical concepts like the earned value analysis in order to assess progress quantitatively. Let me tell you, earned value analysis will tell you about the time where, where you are uh, cross the time or you are before or ahead of the time and the cost, whether you are under budgeted or over budgeted. The time and cost will come from earned value analysis. How do we control? With tracking and controlling, you are doing through this Gantt chart and the resource table. Left resource table, right Gantt chart. Now, when you, as a project manager, you would like to control the project. What do you do? First of all, the control is basically a car you are going. So, if you want to control yourself, you will you will uh, you know leave the accelerator. If you want to go somewhere urgently, you have you will, you will uh, put pressure on the acceler acceleration. So, as a project manager, you will administer, try to find out, oversee, foresee project resources. And then you have to cope up with the problems because as a project manager is all about uh, mitigating the problems, reconciling the problems, solving the problems. And then you have to direct your project staff. This has to be done. This has not to be done. And what has to be done when? This is how we control. This is how we take control of anything which is going on as a project manager in your project. So as a project manager, if things are going well, Say you are getting all the you know milestones done, like the project is on schedule, you are within your budget, you are uh, you know reviewing every time and you are getting a good progress, the milestone are also being achieved on time. So when you get all the schedule, budget, uh, progress, milestone, all these are there and they're going well, then the accelerator will not be pressed that hard. The control will be light. Okay. But when there is a problem, then as a project manager, you need to exercise the control because now you need to reconcile, you need to see situation and then act accordingly, act as quickly as possible. For that, what you will do? You may put additional resources or oh, this is the problem area, this is the task which, which is uh, hampering the situation. So we will add resources. It can be hardware, it can be software, it can be people even. So as I said, people can be uh, redeployed. That is one person from another part can be redeployed here. Two people are needed, three can be deployed or either, you know, you can do the hiring also. And the project schedule can also be redefined. Redefined is important because there you are changing the schedule of all the other activities. Now, here is a concept called time boxing. Market driven projects are bound to give you the deadline. So when you are faced with a severe deadline pressure as a project manager, and if you are experienced, what you will do, you will use a project scheduling and control technique. And that is called a time boxing. This is just a way to mitigate and try to uh, see situation where you can actually get the product delivered on time. It is, it is nothing else. It's just time boxing. You know the task, put it in time box and complete it. When to complete it, when to start other, another project, uh, another task. So that is the thing an experienced project manager will do. So complete product it is possible that it may not be deliverable or delivered by a predefined deadline. In a project schedule, there is a deadline. You are not able to do it as a project manager. So for what you will do, the best way is to do the adopt the incremental software paradigm. In software development lifecycle, we have talked about waterfall, spiral and the agiles, etc. Here you will use, even if you want to use the agile, you will use the incremental software paradigm. And the schedule is derived for each incremental delivery. I am saying every delivery, a schedule will be made for every delivery, not for the whole completion of the functionality of projects. And the task associated with this each increment will then be time boxed. That is first increment you are giving, second increment you are giving. I am saying for a single increment, you will make a schedule. 
try to find out the task and then all these tasks will be kept in a time box time box is nothing but the start date and finish date nothing nothing else time box is just a start date and the end date so now you have a single increment you have made a single uh, schedule for it and devise the task and put it in a time box this means what are you doing is the task associated with each increment we have time box so that schedule for each task is adjusted by working backward from the delivery date for the increment that delivery date for that increment you are going back and then you will readjust the task timing according to that because this is an incremental type of uh, software paradigm a box is put around each task and now when this task is going on when a task is progressing the task is going on when the task is 90% complete for example a task hits hits the boundary of the time box it can be plus or minus 10% it is always uh, minus 9, uh, 10% so when the 90% is done you will start the new job you now now the work for the first task will complete and the new task will begin so question will be from your side if the work is not yet finished how can we proceed what about the 10% this is the this is the key here time boxing by the time the time box is encountered 90% of the task has been complete so the remaining 10% ta task can be delayed to the next increment or it can be completed later the main key is rather than then the 10% task has not been done so it will not be done so rather than stucking on our task and hampering the project schedule the project proceeds towards the delivery date starting the new task that person 10 percent can be done in the next increment can be completed later but these 10 10 10 percent will reduce your delivery time and the severe severe deadline pressure can be achieved this is the whole idea of time boxing okay time boxing is nothing but putting task under a boundary tracking progress for an object-oriented project this we are going to see in the next discussion till then thank you so much take care of yourself